Hello students, welcome to the lecture number 16. Today we will conclude two more examples based on 2D elements means plane areas. We will see some varieties in today's numericals. Let's see. Okay students, so let us start the lecture number 16. Today we will discuss some more examples based on 2D elements means areas. Let us see our next example that is example number 3. Calculate central of angle section 90 by 60 by 6 mm keeping longer leg vertical. Now you can see dimensions will not be clear without the figure. So let us check the figure first. Okay. So here you can see the figure. It is the rectangular angle section in L shape. Let us see some dimensions over here. What are the dimensions generally given to you is this 90 mm is the total depth of the figure which is given over here. What is the 60? The 60 is the width of the rectangle at the bottom. What is the 6 mm? There are two dimensions subjected to 6 mm. This is the horizontal length 6 mm for the top rectangle and 6 mm vertical height for the bottom rectangle. So this is the part number 1 and this is the part number 2. Now let us check the calculations. You must remember that for the calculations we have to draw x and y axis first. Okay. So let us check where is the x and y axis. From the bottom of the figure, we should draw x-axis and from the extreme left, we should draw y-axis like this. On the bottom of the figure, it is the x-axis and from the left side or extreme left side of the rectangle, here it is the y-axis. So there are two parts, rectangle 1 and rectangle 2. Now let us check the calculations. What happens with the calculation is, this is the part 1 in which we have to find three values which three values so we have to find first of all area of the part number one you can see here it is the area of the part number one part number one in which horizontal dimension is 6 mm and vertical dimension is 84 by subtracting this 90 and 6 so it will be 84 right so 84 into 6 will give area 1 504 mm square now what is next we have to calculate x1 which is 3 mm how it is 3 mm let us see the value of x1 first let us check it here the part one is rectangle so cg will be at the center of the rectangle now from the y-axis means from the left extreme left y-axis this distance horizontal distance will be half of this 6 by 2 so it will be 3 mm now Moving ahead, let us check what we have to draw or what we have to calculate now. Here it is y1. How it comes, let us check for the value of y1. Now, y1 means what? It is the center of gravity of part 1 from the bottom axis. This is the center of gravity of part 1. Now, measuring from the bottom. Now, this is very, very important. Up to this level. It is 84 by 2. Okay, up to this level it is 84 by 2, means 42 something. And we have to add this portion to reach at the x axis. So this portion means what? It is equal to 6. So plus 6 will become 48 mm. So this is the calculation for part 1. Now let us check some calculations for part 2 again. Now where is the part 2? You can see in the figure, part 2 is at the bottom. So, let us see the calculation of part 2 now. Now, as you can see, for part 2, we have to calculate first of all area. So, here it is the area of part 2, 60 by 6 equal to 360 mm square. Now, how it comes? For the part 2, horizontal dimension is 60 and vertical dimension is 6. So, by multiplication, 60 by 6 is equal to 360 mm square. Now let us check the calculation for x2. Here it is x2 equal to 30 mm. How it comes x2 equal to 30 mm? So 
for the part number 2 center of gravity will be at the midpoint and from the extreme left means from the y axis this distance will be 60 by 2 that is equal to 30 m now let us calculate again the value of y2 so here it is the y2 3 mm how it comes 3 mm so let me show you y2 is equal to 3 mm actually the center of gravity is the same for part number 2 but we have to measure it from the bottom x axis so from the bottom this distance this vertical distance is 6 by 2 this 6 by 2 means 3 mm so here it is the calculation of the part 1 and part 2 rectangular elements etc etc now let us check x bar and y bar how x bar and y bar are calculated see this this is the calculation of x bar now how x bar and y bar will be calculated that is x bar is equal to a1 x1 plus a2 x2 upon a1 plus a2 replacing the values which we have calculated so a1 is equal to 504 x1 is equal to 3 and so on we can calculate by replacing all the values x bar is equal to 14.25 mm so this is basically the calculation of x bar now let us see the calculation of y bar also so this is the calculation of y bar you can see on the picture now y bar is equal to a1 y1 plus a2 y2 upon a1 plus a2 now by replacing the same values which we have already calculated y bar will be available as 29.25 mm as shown in the screen now this is the basic calculations for x bar equal to 14.25 mm and y bar equal to 29.25 mm itself let us step back the next example what is the variety in the next example is that you can see in this numerical example number 5 find the center of dam section with top width 3 meter bottom width 6 meter and height 9 meter with one face vertical how it comes let us see the figure first okay so here it is the figure now you can check on the figure that this is the dam construction in which the first part is a rectangle like this and the second part is the triangle portion it is the second part let us see the dimensions first here 9 meter is the vertical height of the rectangle as well as triangle and 3 meter and 3 meter is the horizontal width of the rectangle you can see this okay so let us check back first the dimensions of the horizontal and vertical rectangles and triangles see now we are going to calculate x bar and y bar first let us see how it works so this is the calculation of part 1 rectangle so in the part 1 means in the rectangle part we will calculate a1 and x1 y1 now what is a1 so you just see a1 equal to 9 into 3 27 meter square means 9 into 3 is equal to 27 meters square now here it is x1 is equal to x1 is equal to 1.5 meter now how this x1 equal to 1.5 meter is coming so you can check how this x1 is equal to 1.5 meter so from the figure itself you can see the cg of the part 1 will be at the center exactly like this from the left extreme left this distance will be half of this 3 meter so it will be 1.5 meter now what is y1 y1 means vertical distance of the same g from the bottom it is equal to half of 9 which is equal to 4.5 meter so it is the calculation of part 1 now let us calculate the part 2 here it is the part 2 triangle now what is the triangle so you can see in the figure that here is the area of the triangle 1 half 3 into 9 means 1 half base into height where base of the triangle is 3 meter and height of the triangle is same as rectangle 9 meter so it will be 13.5 meter square now again we are calculating x2 3 into 1 third of 3 how it comes 
how it comes so for the triangle cg will be over here somewhere now by calculating in the horizontal direction this distance will be days by 3 means 3 by 3 but up to the extreme left this distance should be added means this distance is equal to width of the rectangle 3 meter so this is 3 plus 3 by 3 so 3 plus 3 by 3 is equal to 4 meter now what is y2 now so y2 is equal to one third of 9 is equal to 3 meter you can see where is y2 so from the same cg up to the bottom this distance will be height by 3 according to formula okay so height is equal to 9 so 9 by 3 is equal to 3 meters so this is the basic basic calculation of part 1 and part 2 now we have to calculate x bar and y bar so by replacing the same formulas of x bar and y bar you just calculate x bar a1 x1 plus a2 x2 upon a1 plus a2 so x bar will be readily available 2.33 meter by replacing all the values as calculated earlier now let us check the calculation of y bar also here it is the calculation of y bar formula of y bar is equal to e1 y1 plus a2 y2 upon e1 plus a2 how it comes so by replacing values of a1 y1 and a2 y2 as calculated earlier we will get y bar is equal to 4.0 meter so these are the basic formulas basic sums in this chapter now in the previous lecture we have studied about the basic sums like symmetrical to y axis or symmetrical to x axis but these two sums are not symmetrical to any axis so these are the varieties of sums which will be going to be tough and more tough so let us wait for the next lecture in which we will conclude this topic by completing two or three tough examples. Till then, thank you students. Goodbye.